Okay, so la last time we were uh, uh, reviewing the, the uh, main problem in description the postulate having to do with the central problem of thermodynamics. That is, what happens when a constraint, a constraint is removed uh, and what is the new equilibrium state? And as we said, this constraint could be uh, either a wall or any other device that, that uh, prevents two systems from, from getting into contact. So now we, we have a basic idea about, we already said equilibrium state, so we have an equilibrium state, let's say A, and an equilibrium state, let's say, or the, let's call it initial, and let's call it final equilibrium state, and this process of taking me from initial to final, it can happen in, in at least two different and, 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 and very important the difference, two different ways. In one way, what is called uh, a reversible process, and this reversible process, it is defined in, in the following way. Each variable, I mean, the, you can go back and forth here and the, 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 this reversal of conditions it takes you to the, to the former state. So, so you might say that if you think of a, let's say of a, of a piston and applying pressure, a reversible process, you keep the, 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 the internal pressure, let's say a gas here, you get the pressure difference between the piston and the gas, you get this pressure difference to be infinitesimally close. In an irreversible process, this constraint is not there, so you can do, we will have many examples of this. This constraint is not fulfilled, this condition, and then what happens is that you get variations, uh, fluctuations, and you, and, and, and you can get any type of variations in this uh, uh, dynamical behavior. Now, the, the important thing about this, and, and we need this too, equilibrium states are defined, as we, as we said, by energy, volume, and number of particles. And there, there is, a, so, so these other final states, so this will be initial, initial volume, number of particles, initial, and this will be final, final, final. And there is a, an important uh, difference also. As you go from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state, there are variables that in going from here to here, it doesn't matter how you, how you get there. So there are many different paths, and this path can be reversible or irreversible. So let's say that we have some of this irreversible path. And there are some variables, like the energy, internal energy, that is. I mean, we call it the internal energy because the, the, the fact, for instance, that the, that the thermodynamic system is moving in a gravitational, I mean, it's moving with, with Earth, is not going to change the internal energy. It, it changes the total energy, but not the internal energy. So, like internal energy, as you go from initial to final, the change in internal energy, let's call it delta U equal to EF, sorry, UF minus, so the energy final mi minus the energy initial. So this change in internal energy is path independent. Or if we want to use a more, uh, probably a more common word, we say process independent. So it doesn't really matter how you go from here to there. So, so this type of quantity is called a state variable. Meaning that the, the variable, the, the, the value of a state variable depends on state only. So it will have a value for the initial state, a value for the final state, and the change is going to be 
the difference. Now, in general, it, this can be expressed mathematically in a, in a more a precise and concise, concise way. The, the thing is, you, you know that if, if you have, um, let's say, a function of x and x, uh, if one goes from process, from, in, from an initial state to a final state, and let's say this corresponds to the value of x and b, there are many ways you can go. So you can go this trajectory, this trajectory, another trajectory. And the, the, the thing is that with uh, state variables, you see, you can get the change, you can get the, the change in energy, initial, final, this gives you the, the change in energy as you go from, from, from one state to the other. This is the, the differential of the energy function. Remember that the energy function is a function of, a, it is going to be a function of certain variables that we will specify in a second. But the important thing to notice at this point is that the, the change in energy is going to be energy in F minus energy in the initial stage. So this is delta u from i to f. And the important thing is that this integral does not depend on the path, so does, does not depend on the process. This is what we call state variable. The change as you go from initial to final state depends only on the the n values of the function. So it doesn't depend on the details of the, of the process that will be contained here and, and the specific path. So the energy is one of these. As you go from initial to final state, the internal energy does not depend on the path. Now, there are some other variables. Uh, and, and, and this is very important. Now we come to the, to the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics tells us that the energy change is equal to work done on the system and done or done by the system plus heat exchange. Now you see that we are using a different D here. This and this other D with strike. And the difference between these two is that whereas energy is state function, work and heat are not. So how much work is involved in going from initial to final state, or how much heat is involved, heat exchange, or is involved in going from initial to final, these two quantities are process dependent. Whereas the sum of the two is, it's process independent. And this is one of the, the beautiful things about thermodynamics, because this is, in a, in a way, this is first law of thermodynamics, it, it, it talks about energy exchange. So energy in thermodynamics can be exchanged in, in two different ways. It can be exchanged either doing work or exchanging heat. And these two things, are two ways of exchanging energy. Historically, it took many years, almost 200 years, to establish that heat was a form of energy. Because work, we, we, if, if we forget about uh, you know, temperature and heat effects, if we just go to, to, to mechanics, we all understand 
the concept of work. Work is just a force times a displacement. This is a clear concept. Now, heat, for many years, the, the equivalence between work and heat was not established. So this was one of the, of the major ob obstacles for the development of thermodynamics. And it took, as I said, almost two centuries to, to come up with, a, with, a, with this idea that when you exchange work on, on when the heat is exchanged, these are two different ways of uh, exchanging energy between the system and perhaps the environment. So this is the, the first law of thermodynamics. Now, the simplest expression so that we, we understand, let's say that we have an ideal gas or a gas in general. Ideal gas is a, we define as a, as, a, as a system where this equation is satisfied that the pressure times the volume equal the, the, number, the number of moles times the gas constant times T. So if we are dealing with a system like this, then the only type of work we need to be concerned with is minus PdV. This is the external pressure. And of course, we have the, the heat exchange part. So in principle, we have a way, we always have a way of computing this uh, but how to compute this require on some new uh, elaboration, some new thinking. And, and but we will talk about that some other some other day. Thank you.